Good morning, everyone. There's a beautiful story about the first president of Israel, Chaim Weitzman. When he was lobbying for the creation of the state of Israel, he was once in front of the, Br- the British Parliament. And one of the British lords said, Dr. Weitzman, why do you insist on establishing the state of Israel in the Middle East? The Middle East is a war-torn neighborhood with lots of violence and bloodshed. Why don't you go to a nice, quiet place like Uganda, maybe, and make a state of Israel there? And Chaim Weitzman said to this British lord, that's like if I would ask you, why did you travel 30 miles this past Sunday to visit your mother when there are a lot of nice old ladies living on your own street? <laughs> this week's Torah portion, fascinatingly, is the last parsha of the year, because after the Shabbos, we go into Rosh Hashanah. And the mitzvah to do teshuva, to return to God when we've strayed, is in this week's parsha. It's like the closing message of the year. Get ready for Rosh Hashanah to do teshuva. And Moshe Benu says something very beautiful. He says to Jewish people, this mitzvah of teshuva, it's not far away from you. It's not difficult. He says, lo me'ever le'yam. It's not over the seas. They say, who's going to travel over the seas to be able to do this mitzvah? And it's not in the heaven, lo shemaim. It's not up in the sky, as they say, pie in the sky, too distant that you're going to say, who will go up to the heavens? Mi alalona shemaim to go perform this mitzvah. El Moshe Benu says to every one of us this Shabbos, before we get ready for Rosh Hashanah, this is very close, very near, very attainable, very easy. So in your mouth, in your heart, in your action to do teshuva. And the question is, how could Moshe Beinu say, okay, maybe it's not over the seas, it's not in the heaven, but to say, it's very easy, it's very near, it's very close to you, in your mouth, in your heart, and in your actions to do teshuva. Is it that easy? And here we have a very interesting idea. How do you define the word easy or hard? Is there a definition of what qualifies easy in life or what qualifies hard? And the answer really is there's no definition. It all depends how valuable it is that you what you want. If I tell you you have to travel 30 miles to visit your mother, is that hard? No, for my mother it's no big deal to visit travel 30 miles to visit my mother. If I have to tell you you have to travel 30 miles to get five dollars, that's difficult, right? But if it's something precious, then your mindset, it's easy, right? When you do something out of love and you realize how, 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 how the reward, how great the reward is, it doesn't feel hard, it feels like it's easy. That's why for our kids, we can do so many things. Do you ever feel like it's hard doing things for your kids? It's a pleasure because I'm giving my kids the, a, a good life, I'm helping them out. It's never hard, it's all your mindset, how precious, how valuable, how rewarding it is. And that's why Moshe Benin says, I'll just tell you an amazing story. There's a rabbi in New York. His name is Rabbi Rieti. You may have heard him. He actually spoke in the shul a number of times. And Rabbi Rieti is a Balchuba. He became religious on his own. And someone once asked him, why did you become a Balchuba? And he said it was due to a personal miracle. And he told the story, and I heard it firsthand from him. His father was actually a, an actor in England, a famous actor who was in many movies. And he grew up in a non-religious home. His parents weren't even planning on giving him a bar mitzvah. What happened? He said he had twin sisters who were two years younger than him. He was the oldest, he had twin sisters younger than him. And he was always fighting with them and getting into trouble and it was two against one. And his father was always blaming him and his mother was blaming him because you're the oldest one. And he was miserable, he didn't know what to do. So one day he prayed to God. He said, God, if you exist, give me a baby brother. It's like, this will be two against two, you know? I need a brother. And he said, God, if you give me a brother on my birthday, I'll know you really exist and I'll be a good Jew. I'll be all in in Judaism, he said. He was 11 years old. He said, a few months later, his mother tells everyone at the dinner table, good news, I'm pregnant and I'm having a baby. When's the baby going to be born? Early March. He's like, early March? His birthday is in early March. He couldn't believe it. He says to his mother, it's going to be a boy and it's going to be born on my birthday. His mother says, how do you know? He says, I know. I prayed to God for this baby. You'll see it's going to be born on my birthday and it's going to be a boy. Sure enough, early March comes. His mother gives birth to a baby boy, but five days before his birthday. So Rabbi Rieti says, he said, you know what, God? Close enough. You tried. I'm still going to be in. He said to his father, I want to have a bar mitzvah. I made a deal with God. He went to the rabbi in England, 
and he, started, he had a bar mitzvah, which he wasn't planning on having. And then after bar mitzvah, there were classes for boys after bar mitzvah. He stayed one year. After two years, he was the only kid left who was still coming to the classes. And one day his rabbi said to him, why is it that all the kids dropped out of this post bar mitzvah class? You're 15 and you're still here. And he told the rabbi the whole story. He said, I made a deal with God and God gave me a boy five days earlier than my birthday, but close enough, I decided I'm gonna keep my deal, God exists. And the rabbi said to him, Jonathan, his name, his name is Rabbi Yon, Jonathan Reddy. Today he's a big speaker, an educator, a real, an amazing rabbi himself. But he said, Jonathan, let me ask you a question. If God was going to answer your prayer and give you a baby brother on your birthday, do you think he would give it to you on your English secular birthday or on your Jewish Hebrew birthday? He said, what do you mean? He had no idea there were two different calendars. He says, well, there's the Gregorian calendar, which is based on the sun, and there's the Jewish calendar, which is based on the moon. It's a lunar calendar. And they're 11 days apart, so therefore... They could be off by a few days every year. He said, I never knew that. The rabbi went to his shelf, took out a book with a 150-year calendar. He looked up his date of birth and his Hebrew calendar, and it was the 26th day of Adar. And then he went to the year that his baby brother was born two years ago, and he runs his finger down, and bingo, 26th of Adar. <laughs> and he realized that God did answer his prayer, and not only gave him a brother, but gave it to him on his birthday. And he said, then I was convinced I had a personal miracle. When you see Hashem's power in your life, His goodness, His kindness, His love, it's easy to want to be close to Him. It's easy to do Teshuvah, because what could be more precious than having a relationship with the Master of the Universe, the Creator of life, the Creator of your life, who gives you breath every second. With this mindset, Moshe Benu says, go into Rosh Hashanah and know it's easy to do Teshuvah, it's not distant, it's attainable, and we must attain it this Rosh Hashanah.